As my collection of computers and paraphernalia has grown, one thing that I've noticed is, quite annoyingly, they do like to go wrong. And when they go wrong, it can be sometimes a real pain trying to find out why. People trying to fix these things, they do quite like using oscilloscopes. And I know nothing about oscilloscopes. I last used one 30 odd years ago. But they look a really handy thing to have. Sticking probes on the chips and whatnot, and watching it all come up on the display. So I've had a look online and seen some of the prices that they go for. A lot of money. But there, mixed in with all these expensive ones, there's also some really cheap ones. In fact, I got one for £40. But is it any good? So a couple of weeks back, I saw something quite exciting on AliExpress, and I thought it'd be great for a little tool for my channel. So fast forward, and here it is. Let's have a look. Right. Okay, if there's no personal stuff in. Right, okay. Test lead. Move that out of the way a second. And... An oscilloscope. Now, I don't know if this is generally going to prove useful for the channel because I've not used one since high school. And it certainly didn't look like this. But nevertheless... We've got one, and once I get my head around using it, maybe it will come in useful. Uh, but time will tell, won't it? But let's get it open and let's, let's have a look at it. For a really cheap oscilloscope, it certainly comes well packaged. No idea what's in there. Oh, look at that. Fab. Right, let's get the leads out of the way for now. Let's go for the main event. An instruction manual. Uh, I think that may come in handy. Let's hope some of it's in English. Yes, it is. I'll look at that later. Some warnings. Okay, okay. And the scope itself. What's this? Okay. Let's get rid of the box. Look at that. that. That's really good. And I think we've got, well, we have got, we've got a in, zero insertion socket, which I presume you can use for testing components, maybe transistors and all that sort of stuff. But at this point, I've uh, I've no idea. So we'll look what's on the back. Is that just the stand? Then we charge it up somewhere. Yeah, USB part on the bottom. Let's just see if it turns on. Okay. Is that going to be the power button? That's the power button. Oscilloscope. What have we got? Right, okay. So I'm guessing that's a signal generator. Tools. I don't think I'll mess with that for now. Okay, so that looks like it's some form of component tester. We're back to oscilloscope. How awesome! Let's just hit OK. Wow. Okay. I'm. <laughs> I'm really quite chuffed with that. I don't know if it's if it's going to be any good, but. I haven't got the budget for uh, some big horsing and all dancing. And even if I did, 
I wouldn't know how to use it. So hopefully that will come in really handy. I've no idea what this lead particularly does over any others, but it'll be fun finding out, won't it? It'll be fun finding out and you can share that experience with me. There's no doubt I'll make a complete hash of using it, but it'll be fun. So looking at the component tester then, I've just got a couple of different value capacitors and, uh, and a transistor. Transistor's brand new, should be working. But if we bob it in, uh, that's got a grip of it. Let's just go OK that. Yay, we've got a transistor. Fabulous. OK. Let's try one of the capacitors. This is 100 microfarad. Hopefully the legs will be long enough. The capacitor's a bit too big. So we'll go and put leads in. Let's cut the leads. Right. Capacitor, 98.8 microfarads. So that was 100 won, so we're pretty much there with that. That capacitor's fine. Give a second one a try. Yep. 22.8 microfarads, it's a 22 microfarad unit. You could go on and test various different things on there. I'm sure it does mention it can do other types of components as well. I seem to remember inductors being mentioned and some other bits and pieces, but it it seems it seems to do what it claims. So the whole real point of me buying this is to see if it can help me diagnose faults. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test it on one of my ZX81s. Now, I recently found a fault on it with the ULA, and I had to guess at the fault, and I swapped it out, and sure enough, I fixed it. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to try it with the good ULA and the bad ULA, and see if using the scope I could see the difference. If that's a yes, then this is worth its money to me, because hopefully going forward it'll help me find other faults. If it's a no, then I may have wasted it. So let's have a look at the ZX81 with this connected up to it and see, see how I get on with it. Right, let's test the good one, see what we get coming up on that. Some activity. Pin two, same again, lots of activity, three, lots of activity, number four, slower, but lots of activity, five, same, activity, and it's high, high, lots of activity there. Again, that one's a lot. Hi. Activity. Nothing. That one's high. High again. Low. High again. Low. Activity there. One's low. Activity. 
Nothing. Tibber tape. Tibber tape. Hi. 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 Low. Hi. Low. Tibbity. 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 And this one should just be high because that's a supply. Which it is. Okay, so that's, that's what it looks like on the good ULA. Now, with it being a good ULA, I've not cross-referenced it. There, there's plenty of documentation online on what you should be expecting to see there. But I've not gone to that trouble because I know that it's working. So from that, let's swap this out and put a bad one in. Let's put this one in, which uh, which we know is, uh, is defective. So here I've swapped around the ULA. There's now the faulty one in there. Got the power into it. Let's let's give it a go and see what's coming back on the pins. Pin one, nothing. Two, nothing. Three, nothing. Four, it's high. Five, low, 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 high, 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 low, 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 low. Let's have a look at that. No, nothing. Low. Twenty one. Nothing. Let's make it to that. No, 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 no. It's high. A little bit of activity there, wasn't there? Low. 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 I think it's quite safe to say from looking at these results compared to the good one. Compared to the good chip, I think it's quite unequivocally faulty. There may be other faults, of course, where uh, it's it's less obvious than that. But looking through those results, uh, they're a world apart from from what the good ones were. So let's summarise this little thing then. So for forty pounds, I've got myself a little oscilloscope and a component tester. The component tester seems to do what it needs to do, working fine. My initial problems that I had with the machine was due to 
my lack of knowledge as to how to use it. Should have read the instructions, perhaps. That would certainly have helped. But I can also say that the customer service was excellent. Um, they were back with me within 24 hours with, with a response and a video to help put me right, which was great. What about the oscilloscope then? Well, in this particular example, there is no doubt that the comparison between the broken one and the good one, it was obvious it was like night and day. You could quite easily see that those trace that the that those uh, that the ULA wasn't functioning as uh, as it should do. In fact, it was barely functioning at all. Some faults would undoubtedly benefit from a better scope to identify them. I don't think that's going to identify something that's borderline or where it's not quite as as obvious as as what this one was. But if I had this scope, would I have been more confident in my original diagnosis where I thought the ULA was faulty? 100% so. It would have saved me quite a bit of time and I wouldn't have needed to guess. It would have been quite obvious for me. So in that respect, do I think that £40 for one of these for doing some basic fault finding is worthwhile? Yes, I do. I think it's a. I think it's a great little device, and it'll be something that I'll be putting to use on a regular basis to assist me. Your mileage may differ, of course, but that's my thoughts on it. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you got this far, I'd appreciate a like, a comment, a subscribe. That would be absolutely awesome. And if you'd really like to support my channel, there's also a link to buy me a coffee in the description. Thanks for your time, and hopefully see you again soon. Bye for now.